Hello everyone. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss about the integration of Extent Report Framework with SpecFlow Framework. Extent Report Framework is quite popular framework for generating the test case execution report. This framework supports different type of reporting mechanism such as HTML report. And the report generated using the Extent Report Framework is quite descriptive and easy to analyze. So let me show you a sample report which is generated using the Extent Report Framework. So this is how the report looks like. It has a very good dashboard where you can do the analysis of the failed test case. Also from the second tab, you can get more detail. So this is the feature file. Inside this feature file, these are the two scenarios. And when you click on the scenario title, it will list down the steps belonging to that scenario. And this will be the format of the report which we are going to generate. So the first thing what we need to do is to install the NuGet package of Extent Reporting Framework in our solution. So just do a right click here, manage NuGet packages for solution and search for Extent and install this package in the solution. So once this is done, let us discuss what will be the format of our report. So this is how I'm going to generate the report. So the report will have the feature which will have the information about the feature. Inside the feature, there will be scenario, which will have the information about the scenario, such as what is the title. And inside the scenario, the information about the each step. Basically in this format. So when you want to generate the report in this manner, first of all, you need information about these things. That means you need the information about the feature, you need the information about the scenario and its step. So the question arise from where we can get the information about this thing. Now this can be done by using the context injection concept of SpecFlow. So in order to get the information about the feature, I will take the help of feature context. Similarly, to get the information about the scenario and its steps, I'm going to use scenario context. So this will become more clear when we start with the coding. But let us discuss first what are the steps which we need to follow in order to work with the extent report framework. So as I mentioned earlier, the report type which we are going to generate will be HTML report. So first we need to create the object of HTML reporter class. Then we need to create the object of extent report. Then we need to attach the object of HTML reporter class to the extent report. So when you attach the HTML reporter class object to the extent report, it will start the extent report engine. And from there onwards, we can capture the test case event and pass it back to the extent report. And after that, we can capture the, the test event and pass it to extent report. And in the end, we need to call the flush method, which will finally save all the event and generate the report file. So I'm going to take the help of our class that is general hooks to do the modification for extent report. So the first thing what we need to do is to create the object of HTML reporter, then create the object of extent report and attach the object of HTML report with extent report. So here I'm going to create a static method. We need to make sure that when we create the object of HTML reporter and attach it to the extent report, it should happen before the test case execution start. Because at that point, we need to make sure that the extent report engine is started and we are ready to capture the test event. So for that, I have created a static method and the attribute which I'm going to use with this method is before test run. This attribute is coming from specflow framework. Now here I will create the instance of HTML reporter. And here we need to supply the file name along with its path. After that, we need to create the instance of extent report and attach the reporter instance to the extent report. So extent reports dot attach reporter and specify the instance of HTML reporter. So 
so once this is done the next thing is that we need to capture the information about the feature and as we know that we are relying on feature context so here I'm going to create one more static method and the attribute is before feature again this attribute is coming from the spec flow framework and the parameter to this method will be feature context so during the runtime spec flow framework will automatically create the instance of feature context and pass it over here that is done via dependency injection and this object will have the information about the feature so first I'm going to do a null check null is not equal to feature context so here I will use the object of extent report to create the test so extent report dot create test so this method basically is going to make an entry inside the report and the type is of feature along with this you can supply the name as well as the description so this information can easily be fetched via feature context as you can see here the return type of this method is extent test so let me create one more private variable for this and I'm going to use the variable over here after that we need to add the entry for scenario so here I will create one more method and the attribute with this method is before scenario the parameter to this method is scenario context so again the same thing will happen during the runtime the spec flow framework will create the object of scenario context and pass it over here here I'm going to check for the null as you can see here the scenario is inside the feature that means we need to use the variable which is pointing to the feature and create a child node which will represent the scenario so here I will use feature dot create node so as you can see here I'm not using the method that is create test because the create test method is used to make a separate entry inside the report in our case we need to have this kind of structure that's why I will use the create node method and the type parameter will be scenario here again we need to supply the name as well as the description and all those information can be fetched via scenario context and again the return type of this method is same that is extent test so let me create one more private variable which will represent the scenario now once this is done the next thing is we need to capture the steps of a scenario so here I'm going to add one more method and the attribute is after step the reason I used after step because we need to capture the result after the step execution is done that's why the attribute after step is used not the before step now here we need to put a logic of identifying the what type of step is coming whether it's a given when or then and based on that we need to add the node so again all that information can be fetched via scenario context so the information related to given when then basically the step type can be fetched via scenario context so we need to have a private variable so that this information can be accessed outside this method so this is the private variable and I'm going to use this and now I can use this to fetch the required information so scenario context dot current scenario block so this is the property which will give you the information about the current scenario block if I go inside this you can see here the return type of this property is a enum and which represent the different step type so once I have the information about the scenario block based on the type I will create different node the reason why I added switch case is because we have enum and based on enum we need to create different node so switch case is the fastest way of doing that so here 
to create the node I need to use the variable which is this one first we need to initialize it so this can be done over here because as we know that once we create the node the return type of this method is extend test so I will store that here and now using this variable I will create the child node so create node type of given and again here you can supply the name as well as description so name can be fetched via scenario context so this will return the title of the current step which is being executed and similarly I am going to do the same for other now once this is done the last thing what we need to do is to call the flush method that will capture all the test event and write inside a file so that can be done in the method let me build our solution put the debug point and run this in a debug mode step over to create the HTML reporter then object of extent report and attach the reporter So you can see here automatically the spec flow framework create the object of feature context and supplied here. So this is the information about the feature currently being executed. And similarly for the scenario context. So this is the scenario title this is a given step again given step so failure happened and let me continue the execution so the execution is done let me open the location so let me delete this to HTML and rerun it So I can see here there is a report with the name index.html. First, let me check the constructor of this extent HTML reporter. Okay, so it says that the folder path, that means we cannot specify the name over here. It will treat this as a folder location. I think that is the problem. That's why it didn't generate the report with the name what we have supplied. So let me rerun it again. So the execution is done let me see here so here is the report okay so you can see here this is the report which we generated now so the feature which is the title here and this is the description inside the feature there are two scenario this is the title and these are the steps Okay, so these are the steps so as you can see here one of the step got failed but it did not capture this part to capture the failure case we need to do little more code modification so this is the place where we are creating the node at the same place we need to check for the error and based on that we need to add the required information in the report the error information can be fetched via scenario context again so here I'm going to put a if block if there is an error 
then add that information else add the success information so this is our success information and if there is an error then instead of the title I will put the error information so first we need to check for the error that can be done via scenario context dot test error if it is not equal to null that means there is an error and same test error property can be used to fetch the information about the error dot message new line plus stack trace so similar thing I'm going to do for other type of step so this is done let me rebuild the solution also let me delete this to HTML file and run the test again so the execution is done let me check the report so this is our feature file description so we are getting the information about the failure but still the step is marked as passed so that is something we need to fix now we can mark a particular step as a failure with the help of a method called fail so dot fail and here I'm going to specify the stack trace and in a case when you want to mark a particular step as a pass you can just type pass so after this changes let me clean the solution and rebuild it delete this to HTML file and rerun the test so the execution is over let us check the report so as you can see here now we are getting the proper status so this is the feature which is called failed because one of the scenario got failed and from the dashboard also you can get the additional information so let me change one more thing as you can see here we are getting the information but we are missing the step title and the title can be fetched via this so similarly I'm going to modify the other steps also so let me clean the solution and rebuild it and again run the test so the execution is done let us check out the reports so now we are getting the proper title along with the failed message.